There may be times that you want to give your audience a Google presentation in slides, or maybe a Google document or a Google sheet, but you don't want to give them that edit view with all the tools on the top and everything. You just kind of want to give them like the presentation view of it. Well, publish to the web is a feature that lets you do that. Let's take a look at how to do that. Hi friends, Rick Bray with the Plick team at Broom Tagabosis. And in this video, we're taking a look at how to publish to the web for Google Files. Now, uh, you can see here, I'm gonna put up in post-production the times for different things we're gonna be doing in this video. I'm also gonna, uh, I don't know, chapterify the video down below. So when you hover over the timeline, you'll see where the different segments fall. Um, we're gonna start off with why do we publish to the web? Then we're gonna look at how to publish Google Slides in particular, because I think that's maybe the most uh, popular thing that's published options that we can get into, um, how to find the link later on, how do you update a slide once it's published, linking versus embedding the publish, looking at then how to uh, publish Google Docs and Google Sheets, and then finally there's gonna be a little added bonus uh, that we'll get into throughout the video. So you're welcome to watch this in its entirety or just go to the part you need. So let's talk about why publish to the web. So most people are familiar with the idea of sharing a file, and certainly you can share it as uh, you know view only or comment or full edit access. But when you do that, it's gonna still give you this outline view, which by the way, your domain may allow it. You can hide the film strip. That's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, or in addition to this, it's gonna give you these, these tools across the top, and sometimes, it's better to just view content in present mode. So your, your audience then has to click present, which I don't know, kind of bugs me sometimes. I wish there was just a way to get it here. Why would I want to get it here? Well, maybe there's links I want them to follow. Maybe I want to uh, just have them consume information this way, watch a video, see a question. There's all sorts of different things we can get into, but there is a way that we can share this view and it's published to the web. So let's take a look at how to get there. Uh, for Google Slides to start with, I've opened up my Google Slide presentation here, just a, a random one I made. And under File in the top left-hand corner, we're gonna go about two thirds of the way down here and find Publish to the Web. Perfect. This little pop-up will come up and there is Link versus Embed. It doesn't matter which one you pick to start with. So we're, we're just gonna go with Link. It's gonna give you a link that you can share out. And in short, all I need to do to get this to publish to the web is to hit that big yellow button that says, you got it, publish. It's gonna say, are you sure you want to publish this? And I'm gonna say, okay. And then boom, there's your link. I can press, uh, cause I'm on a Mac, uh, commands or yeah, command C, you could do control C, whatever, and, and copy it, or you can right click and say copy. And then you can paste that into your, your learning management system, an email, uh, wherever you're putting it, Twitter, you know, whatever, uh, to have people access that link. And to show you what it looks like, I'm gonna open an incognito window, meaning I don't have a Google account associated with it. I'm gonna paste that link in here and tell it to go. And poof, there it is, right? I can uh, go down here and use the arrow keys to move forwards and backwards. I can click on the slides to go forwards. I can use my arrow keys to go forward and backwards. But it's that that view, again, the present view, and uh, links would be active and all that stuff. So that's, that's great, grand, and wonderful. That's how we publish these. Now, you may have noticed in here, there were some things that came up, right? This auto advance slides, I can set it so that uh, when, they hit, when, the, when the user hits play or when the slideshow plays, this is how much time would be between each slide before it automatically advances to the next. So you can adjust that. Hot tip at the end of this video uh, is going to be how you can get a custom amount of time that's either less than a second or more than a minute, right? Uh, or somewhere in between any of these, but that comes later. There's also this checkbox that says start slideshow as soon as the player loads. So I had that checked off, right? Uh, and that means that it just stays on the first slide when they access the link. If I check this box and give them the link, then it will automatically start playing with whatever time interval I set. Right? Cool. Um, the last, or not the last, the second option here 
is to restart the slideshow after the last sl slide. So that's a looping command, right? That means once we get to the end, after the set amount of time up here expires, it will automatically go back to the start. That's something that's really useful if you're dealing with like pictures, right? A picture sli sli slideshow, hopefully your picture slideshow works better than my conversation right now, uh, but it would hit the end and it would just go back to the beginning. So that's, that's an awesome, awesome use for that one. Now, what happens if you lose this link, right? If you can't find it? Well, the good news is it's found in the same place you got it to begin with. You go to File, you select Publish to the Web. You'll notice the Published option is, is grayed out because it already is published. So I can just select the link and then copy and paste it wherever it needs to go. If for some reason you need to pull it back, you can click this button that says Stop Publishing and that will pull it back. Now, one question that often comes up is, what if I make a change? What if, for example, I add a new slide here, right? Um, will my audience see it? Do I have to get them a new link? And the great answer is no. All they would have to do is revisit the link or refresh the link if they're currently looking at it. So to show you that, right, we'll go here. And again, there's, there's no new slide. There's no fourth slide. But if I add that link, if I paste it in, now, the new slide is there, right? And I can get to there on the previous one where it was locked if I just refresh the link and there's the new slide, right? So to get update, if you update the slide deck, if you update the content, your audience can view that most recent version by either refreshing the page or just clicking the link again. The other thing we saw when we published was this idea of link and embed. Right? A link is, it's just what you saw. It's a link to get out there. And you can pretty much put that link anywhere you would add a link and people can click on it and they'll see your slide deck. The embed option, if you're familiar with embedding content, maybe if you're using a learning management system or a web page, you can set your size of the um, window, right? Of the iframe basically. And you can set it to custom if you want. Still, you get the uh, auto advance options, the start, the restart, all those options are there. And here's your iframe code to get that embed page. If you're not familiar with embedding content, you probably want to stick with the link is what I would recommend. Now, the next thing is, how do we do this with Google Docs and Google Sheets? Well, let's take a look at Google Docs. It looks a little bit different on the, um, the, the audience side, but to get it published, pretty much the same uh, tools and, and process for both platforms. So I'll click on File, and then, hey, what do you know? Publish to the web. Again, I can link or I can embed. Huh? Same is true for Google Sheets, right? Their spreadsheet. Uh, I can share it is where if, if you don't see publish to the web, it might change. They might have a share option here where I can publish to the web. Uh, again, link, embed. You'll notice with Sheets, you do have the option of embedding the entire document or just a specific tab. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you're probably not using multiple tabs and that's okay. You can also embed it as all these different types. If you're not familiar, keep it a web page. That works, works really well. Uh, but that's how you can do it in different platforms, whether it be Docs or Sheets. Now for the hot tip that we were talking about, the little extra bonus, if you will. Uh, when you go to publish to the web and you set your time, you're, you're limited to what they pick here. And sometimes you might want a little more time, you might want a little less time. So how can we do that? Well, it involves looking at this code, right? Looking at the link itself. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna head over to our new, our incognito window. I'm gonna paste it in. And all the magic happens here that we're talking about, all these settings, I don't really wanna call them magic, is at the end, right? When I look at the very end of the link, first off, I have publish, okay? That's publish to the web. Then it says start. Do you want this to start automatically? False? No, it will not start automatically. If I replace that with true, it will start automatically. Right? So you can, that's what those little check boxes really do. They set whether this says true or false. And loop, right? We talked about, does it restart? Again, false, it does not restart. 
True, it will restart, but here's the delay. This is where we can customize how much time is in between the slides. So I'm gonna need to change this first off to make this work. I need to change this to true, or you just need to check the box to make it true. Uh, and I'm gonna change. The important part is to remember it's in milliseconds. So 3000 milliseconds is three seconds, right? Um, and we'll see kind of what that looks like here. I'll. Uh, Follow the link, you'll see in three seconds, it should, there, go to the next slide. Okay, great, grand, wonderful. Uh, what if though, if instead we make this 1000 milliseconds? Well, now it's one second between slides. What if instead we make it, oh, I don't know, 500 milliseconds? It's gonna be a half second. Boop, boop, boop. So you can get it all the way down to one millisecond if you want. Why the heck would you do that? Because believe it or not, you can make stop animation with Google Slides and it's super cool. So again, that was just going into the link itself, finding the end of the link and adjusting the delay value that's in milliseconds. So there you go, friends. I know definitely a longer video, but there's a lot of pieces that are all valuable in here with Publish to the Web. I hope you found one of those pieces or all of those pieces beneficial. And uh, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel so you can get updates and notifications when new content is posted. Take care and thanks for all your hard work.